Thank you, and good morning, everybody. How wonderful to see us opposite the United Nations, that organization that is supposed to be representing the nations of the world working for peace and justice. We're here to save our oceans, to save our waterways. Wake up, America. Wake up the world. Listen to us. We humans are destroying our oceans, our water, and with that, the whales, the dolphins, the turtles. We are destroying whole sections and cultures as we displace people to other lands and contaminate their food supply. We do not seem to understand that oceans play a fundamental role for life on Earth, providing over 70% of the oxygen we breathe and over 97% of the world's water supply. Do we not understand that our oceans are under threat, with just over 3% being protected? Indigenous peoples are at the front lines of the impact of change and of climate change. About 27 million indigenous people in nearly 2,000 communities across 87 countries live in coastal communities. Rising sea levels have forced those communities to relocate. Coastal communities experience flooding, extreme weather, and erosion faster than other parts of countries. Loss of access to traditional lands and territories means loss of ancestral, spiritual, totemic, and language connections that are rooted in those areas. In U.S., communities have had to relocate due to climate change. Coastal communities experience flooding, extreme weather, and erosion quicker than other parts of the country. Seafood is a crucial source of sustenance and closely tied to indigenous cultures. Overfishing, killing of top predators, pollution, ocean acidification, coral bleaching, and the ocean-wide migration of fish due to climate change threatens those resources. For thousands of years before the first Western explorers set foot on these shores, cultures with different beliefs, traditions, and languages flourished. They shared a common connection to the land and waters that inspired and sustained them. Our country, the United States, has from the beginning a history of displacing, destroying, starving the original indigenous people on this continent. Throughout the years, we have expanded the white men's reach from the Western world. We have used our powers of destruction to test the limits of atomic power. Let me take you back to 1946. From 1946 to 1958, the United States detonated 23 nuclear weapons on Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands. Nuclear testing occurred at seven test sites on the reef itself, on the sea, in the air, and underwater. The residents had been promised they would be returned after the test, but they were not. They were all removed to Rogerick Atoll and Kill Island. The nuclear test made the island unfit for habitation destroying their farmland and fisheries. The people had been displaced from their land, their livelihood taken, 
and food supply destroyed. They were placed into total dependence on the United States government for survival. Today, the female population of the Marshall Islands have a 60 times greater cervical cancer mortality than a comparable mainland United States population. The island's populations also have a five times greater likelihood of breast or gastrointestinal mortality, and lung cancer mortality is three times higher than the mainland population. The male population on the Marshall Islands lung cancer mortality is four times greater than the overall United States rates and oral cancer rates are 10 times greater. The first test over Bikini Atoll in July 1946 was codenamed Operation Crossroads. Bombs were dropped from an aircraft and detonated 520 feet above the target fleet. The second was suspended under a barge it produced a large cloud that contaminated all of the United States ships, Japanese fishing ships, and was identified as the world's first nuclear disaster. This was not supposedly a wartime. It was a nuclear arms race. The second series of tests was codenamed Operation Castle. It tested a new design utilizing a dry fuel thermonuclear bomb. It was detonated at dawn on March 1954. But scientists, United States scientists, miscalculated. The nuclear explosion far exceeded its expected yield. It was about 1,000 times more powerful than either of the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. The scientists and military authorities were shocked by the size of the explosion. And many of the instruments that they had put in place to evaluate the effectiveness of the weapon were destroyed. So my question today is, can we trust this government, these atomic scientists, to do any better? Over the past half century, the world has had its share in which radioactive material has been dumped or discharged into the oceans. A British nuclear fuels plant has repeatedly released radioactive waste into the Irish Sea. A French nuclear reprocessing plant has discharged similar waste into the English Channel. And the list goes on and on. We continue on our destructive path, our war on indigenous populations and the oceans. The nuclear industry negatively and disproportionately impacts indigenous peoples, their nations, their culture, their land, their history, and waters. Every day, toxic chemicals are dumped from industrial sources or flow off land and directly into our rivers and streams, ending up in our oceans. The number of dead zones and these are parts of the ocean in which there is no oxygen, is growing at an alarming rate, with over 400 now known to exist. Nearly 9,000 square miles of ocean along the Gulf Course are uninhabitable by marine life. Substances such as oil, mercury, lead, pesticides, and other heavy metals can all be found within the ocean as byproducts of coal combustion, waste incineration, mining, and other environmentally detrimental activities. Indigenous people in the Arctic are especially susceptible to the effects of methylmercury, 
because they consume large amounts of fish and marine animals as part of their traditional diet. But the world has never seen quite an event like the one unfolding off the coast of eastern Japan, in which thousands of tons of radioactively contaminated water from the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant are pouring directly into the ocean. Signs of spreading radioactive material are being found off the coast of Japan, including the discovery of elevated concentrations of radioactive CCM and iodine in small fish several dozen miles south of Fukushima, along with high levels of radioactivity in seawater 25 miles offshore. In June of 2020, United Nations human rights experts urged the Japanese government to delay any decision in the ocean dumping of nuclear wastewater from the reactors at Fukushima. They stated that such decisions could have profound implications for people and the planet for generations to come. There will be grave impacts on the livelihood of local Japanese fisher folk, but also the human rights of people and peoples outside of Japan. This year, 2021, Japan announced it will release 1.25 million tons of treated wastewater contaminated by the wrecked Fukushima nuclear power plant into the Pacific Ocean. The government said, quote, it is the best way to deal with tritium and trace amounts of other radionuclides in the water. But later, a Japanese official clarified that details of the release need to be worked out and approved. There are going to be, they say, gradual trial releases that might take 40 years to complete. Environmental groups, fisheries, organizations, and neighboring countries have condemned their decision, citing the vast amounts involved. Marine scientists have expressed concerns about the possible impact of the discharge on marine life and on fisheries. I could go into more detail, but I've held you long enough. So let me just conclude by saying any additional release of radiation will come on top of the estimated 538.1 petro bare quarrels of radioactivity emitted into the atmosphere by the explosions that blew apart the reactor buildings in the days after the earthquake. The interconnectedness between the ocean and humanity includes also pollution and overfishing. These are related to poverty, hunger, leading to the need for all of us to be involved in promoting health, ensuring access to water and sanitation. When it comes to the ocean, it's the common heritage of humankind. There's no north, south, east, west. If the ocean is dying, it's dying on all of us, from Peter Thompson. So let us join together to protect the oceans, protect the water, save our oceans, save our water, wake up people of the world. If the ocean is dying, it's dying on all of us. Save the oceans, save the water. Save the oceans, save the water. Thank you.